In this lesson, we're going to go over importing, talk about the static mesh editor, and also set up collision meshes. So let's get started. To import, we just go over here, click import. Now I put this right on the desktop for ease, but if you're doing a lot of meshes, I recommend creating a separate folder for that. So I'm just going to double click, import. Now let's just go through some of these options. Once you get them set, you probably won't have to tweak them very often. But for now, let's review some of the options. We'll go over more of the skeletal mesh options in a later chapter. But for now, the one we're going to focus on is auto-generate collisions. I usually leave this on. Unreal does a good job of generating collisions. But we're specifically going to have one of the meshes that it doesn't. And we'll show how to fix that in this video. All right, let's go through. In addition, one of the things I'm going to point out is the generating of the light map UVs, and that will go into light map channel one by default. In addition, if you're coming in and learning this class from Unity, uh, if you're an older Unity user, uh, Unity used to not use the MICT space, but it's become kind of a default. So generally, you can just leave this as the default. Most programs deal with that as the normal map generation algorithm. You can leave most of these as default. Let's close this. For the transform, generally it's good to build your assets at scale in the program you're bringing in. But if you find them, I built them a little smaller just to show this. You can change the scale here and that won't cause an additional transform once you've brought them in. They'll all still say scale one if you change the import scale here. And you can, like I mentioned in the last video, you can also change the scale inside of the FBX. Let's go down to materials. Now in the materials area, you can generate new materials that are detected for each of the objects that you're bringing in. So that's great. And finally, you can take a look at the FBX file information. We are using the approved 2018 version inside of Maya. So looks good. Let's hit import all. So now that these are coming in, generally I put my materials in a separate folder. So I'm going to select those, shift select, and I'm just going to drag and move those over to the materials folder. So I'm going to say move here. Okay, great. Now I just have my meshes. They have little asterisks by them. So that just means I need to save them. And now I can drag these all into the scene. See how they came in. Great, looks like they came in fine. We can move them around. We built them in a way that they will easily modularly copy. So that's nice. Let's see what happens if we play from here. Can we run through these arches? No, we can't. Interesting. So let's hit escape and open these objects up in the static mesh editor. So we can either double click here or start getting used to hitting control E, which will open up the appropriate editor. So now we've got that open. Let's take a look at the interface a little bit. Some of the core important things you can diagnose, you can take a look at the, the surface normals of the object. If parts of the geometry are see-through, you might have an issue with surface normals. Other things you can diagnose, the UVs. Now we mentioned that the UV zero was what we brought in from Maya. That was what we specified. And this is what was auto generated. Now you can see that there's slightly more padding between the shells. And that really has to do a lot with the light map resolution, which we'll talk a little bit more in chapter three. But this is the light map channel. Let's turn that off. Let's take a look at our collisions. By default, you want to keep the collisions as simple as possible, especially if it's a very complex mesh. So right now, there's a giant box collision going around our object. And that's great, except for we want to be able to walk through the arch. And that's because this object has convex areas inside of it. You can take care of this in a couple of different ways. There are ways of going under collision. We can remove the existing collision or just select it. I, I hit undo. You can select these and hit delete. And then there's different options up here. 
there's spherical collision, capsule collision. Those are very efficient because they're just calculating collision based on the radius of the object. So you're going to see a lot of capsules and spheres inside of character meshes. Boxes are pretty simple as well. I mean, it's just calculating six collision faces based on the box. And here's these dops that will calculate based on consistent angle planes. Now we can choose one of these or try. And even though we chose one of these more complex dops, it didn't quite do the job for us. But Unreal has a newer algorithm. They just improved an Unreal 4.25. If you go down here, convex decomposition. And convex decomposition will actually look and try to calculate if there's a convex surface here. So let's try that and check that out. I figured it out. Awesome. There's a few other things we'll go over in a video in the near future. We'll talk about the socket manager and socket snapping in this chapter. So we'll be revisiting this static mesh editor. In the chapter in lighting, chapter three, we'll also go over light map resolution and why we'll probably want to turn that up for some objects. All right, but now we can save this object. Let's close and let's play in engine. So we'll just right click and say play from here. But hey, check that out. We can go through. All right, excellent. So let's hit escape. We can also take a look at the fact that our object that we had edge hardness settings and that came through just nicely, just the way we wanted, as well as the material IDs that we had set for these objects, right? It has material ID one and two. And since it's an array, it's just labeling the first one as zero. Same thing goes with our archway. So great, this pretty much wraps up what I wanted to cover in this video. We imported the objects, we diagnosed and set up keeping the defaults that we have our collision meshes auto-generated, our light maps auto-generated. We tested the scale in engine, we tweaked the collision meshes, and we've saved the objects. We've moved our additional materials around inside of the content browser. So we're pretty much set. That'll wrap things up. See you in the next video.